Hey everybody, welcome back to Geek Mania with your favorite girl, Starlight. Uh, well, if you're an avid watcher and a huge fan of Geek Mania, well, then you know that time travel and a lot of things to do with manipulating time are a huge part of geek culture. So today I'm actually going to go into some of my favorite movies that have to do with time travel slash, you know, thriller components, okay? But before we do that, I want you to go ahead, like the video, click that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit that little bell so you can be notified whenever we post a brand new video. And without any further ado, Let's get right into it. So the first movie I want to talk about is The Call, okay? It's, it was released in 2020, and it's a Korean film. So this girl, Soyeon, okay, she arrives at her old family home with her sick mom, and she receives an incoming call through her home landline, and it's from a young woman in panic named Young Suk, who claims that her mom is trying to burn her alive. So after a lot of these frantic calls, the girls start talking, and they discover that they're actually calling from the same phone, same house, separated by 20 years. So Soyeon is calling from the year 2020, and Young Suk from the year 19. So in this newfound friendship, the girls try to, you know, change each other's present lives and begin sharing knowledge that allows them to reshape their reality. So when Young Suk goes as far as to prevent a family tragedy that resulted in, you know, Soyeon's father's very early death, Soyeon attempts to return the favor by helping so Young Suk, you know, avoid her tragic future. But as these alterations bring them, you know, happiness, freedom, they also face unexpected consequences as Young Suk has these psychotic tendencies that kind of begin to threaten Soyeon's future future with her power to change their history. So if you haven't seen it yet, you should definitely go ahead, watch it. It's really mind-blowing. It leaves you, you know, the ending is really surprising. It might leave you a little scarred at the end, but you know, you should definitely go check it out. I do not want to spoil it for you. So the next film I'm about to talk about, you probably heard of it or you watched it. If you haven't, what, have you been living under a rock? I'm obviously talking about Inception, okay? It's a 2010 science fiction slash action film written and directed by the one and only Christopher Nolan, okay, it stars Leonardo DiCaprio, who's actually playing a professional thief who steals information by infiltrating his, you know, target's subconscious. So this skill has made him like a hot commodity in the world of corporate espionage, but has also cost him everything he loves, okay? And he's offered a chance to erase his criminal history as payment for implanting a person's idea into another target's subconscious. But throughout this, he's constantly haunted by his tragic past, like when he left his kids behind, also his wife, okay? That's another complicated story. We do not know what happened happened to his wife, how she died, but she's constantly haunting his every move. And like another intriguing thing he does is, okay, he constantly has like this top with him that he uses to check whether he's still in a dream or in reality, because these worlds are really similar and he gets lost. So what he does is he, you know, spins the top and if it does not stop spinning, that means he's not in a real, you know, place. He's still in someone's subconscious. Okay, so this movie is really insane. It also has an insane cast. Okay, it's got Joseph Gordon-Lewitt, Marion Cotillard, Elliot Page, Tom Hardy, Dalip Howe, Cillian Murphy, Tom Belinger, and even Michael Caine so much more so go ahead get your popcorn and go watch it right now because you know it's also kind of similar to Oppenheimer which will be out on the 21st of July so if you're planning to watch Oppenheimer you should definitely go ahead watch this first but not just this okay you should also watch this other movie by Christopher Nolan it's called Tenet okay which I'm actually going to get into right now so Tenet is actually another 2020 film, which is arguably the most ambitious and complicated film by Christopher Nolan so far. So Tenet follows like this unnamed CIA agent who's played by Radina Cool, calm, collected John David Washington. The film opens guns blazing, literally, okay? A symphony performance in Kiev is attacked and this unnamed CIA agent, who's actually referred to as the protagonist throughout the film, he is sent undercover, okay, to retrieve a colleague and a strange artifact. So this protagonist, he is captured, he is tortured, completely unwilling to disclose any information Okay, so he swallows this cyanide pill in an attempt to take his own life, but then he survives. He wakes up and he finds out, okay, that pill was completely fake, the artifact was taken away, and his allegiance to his agency has caused him to be adopted into a top-secret assignment known as Tenet. So this assignment leads him to a secretive facility in which the protagonist learns about the threat that they face. Inversion. What is inversion, okay? As we see and as we experience reality, we see objects and their entropy as they move forward in time, okay? However, there have been objects found in which their material is inverted, causing them to move backwards through time. And this is actually demonstrated in the film with a bullet. However, the real threat appears to be inverted nuclear weapons, okay? So the protagonist kind of teams up with Neil, who's actually played by, our, you know, Robert Pattinson, our Edward boy. So the duo tracks down the source of these inverted objects to this Russian arms dealer named Andre, okay? So to get closer to Andre, who's really wealthy, very suspicious, the protagonist 
protagonist, they enlist the help of Andre's wife, Kat. And Kat, you know, she loads this husband. He's very abusive and, you know, he threatens to take her son away if she disowns him. So I'm not, I'm not going to dive too much into the specifics and the ending because I don't want to spoil anything for you. What ensues is, you know, the protagonist's persistent attempt to prevent Andre's malicious plan of using this inversion technology to basically end the world, okay? This is all framed and achieved through inverted action scenes that have never been seen on the big screen. And that's why I love Christopher Nolan, okay? He takes your breath away every time, you know? So another movie that I want to go into is Mirage, okay? It's this 2018 Spanish film, which was written and directed by the incredibly talented Oriol Paolo, okay? So the premise of the film is really apparent. It's the butterfly effect. So this means if you take one event and you make a small change to it in the past, it cascades into a substantial turn of events in the future. So this movie has three timelines that's created because of conversations between a person in the past and the person in the future. So in 1989, during the fall of the Berlin Wall, there was a 72-hour long electrical storm. So this boy named Nico is recording a video in his house and he hears some noises. He sees a fight scene through his neighbor's house window. So he goes to the house only to find the body of Miss Weiss, who is the wife of his neighbor, Mr. Prieto. So he sees him with a knife. Nico tries to escape and he is accidentally hit by a car on the road. Prieto is arrested and, you know, with a murder weapon in his hands and Nico dies in the car accident. So, so then again in 2014, okay, a married couple named Vera Roy and David Ortiz, they move into Nico's house along with their daughter Gloria, okay? And then they find this old TV set in the storeroom along with some video recorders and cassettes. So these cassettes are actually the ones that Nico was recording. And then an electrical storm begins similar to the one in 1989 and they were watching Nico's video and the TV starts broadcasting the live news that was taking place when Nico was making the video. And during dinner, you know, they share this information with their neighbor and his mom and then they learn how Nico was killed. And then at night, Vera sees the boy on TV. She's watching the footage and she's shocked to find out that she can interact with him and, you know, she gets scared. But then she tries to warn Nico not to go out to the road so he will not get hit so the next morning Vera wakes up to like a brand new reality where nobody is aware of the incidents other than her okay David is completely married to somebody else Gloria was never born she's really disturbed and then she starts to think you know what if she can interact with Nico once more she'll be able to correct what she has done so then she has this mission to go and fix everything so the movie has like an overall mystery slash drama vibe to it if you haven't seen it go check it out the ending is like mind-blowing but then again it's very satisfying I really enjoyed this movie I think you should definitely go watch it out grab your popcorn yeah okay so that's all for today's video i hope you enjoyed it i hope you got a lot of inspiration to go ahead and watch these movies and if you have already watched them comment down below what your favorite thing about the movie was but please no spoilers and you know you can catch me next week uh, same time you know same place geek mania but for now this is starlight bye